let's go. This is, oh, looks like I'm gonna cut my head off there. Whoa, check this baby out. Sweet, this ax, when you put it in your hand, you feel like, yeah, let's find the biggest tree around here and go cut it down. This is an original Collins and Company ax. It's probably one of the most iconic and traditional shapes. Could be wrong on that, but I think it is. And so I thought I'd like to have one of these for myself. Probably about a three and three quarter pound head. I actually didn't weigh it. Yeah, we'll go with that. Three inches tall. One inch on the back. Huge blade on this guy. Yes, we are gonna do some cut. Let's get that forge lit and let's go for it. Here we go. Starting material is two inches by five and a quarter inches long. I take that and make it rectangular. And what I'm trying to do with this is I'm trying to make the width as thin as I feel comfortable running the slitter through. And I'm drawing the line at uh, width is inch and a half and height is about two and a quarter. Once you got that, I uh, take my slitter and I'm gonna go in one and seven eighths from the center of the slitter to the end of the material. So you start driving that in, using coal dust as a lubrication, sprinkle a little bit, pop, 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 couple hits, pop it out, cool it off, rotate it, cycle it, and you keep passing that cycle around until you've driven that slitter through. Well, once you've got the slitter in, I then come in, and now this is the step that determines whether or not your ax is gonna have the lugs on the bottom. I know that I want zero lugs. I want the ax to be that traditional Collins style ax because that's what we're going for. So I will come in from both sides with a fuller and fuller in that divot. Once you've got that divot in there, you're on to uh, drifting. Now, I do my drifting a little bit different, I think, than most people. And, and I'll explain why. I could be right, I could be wrong. I don't think there's a right or wrong on this one. This is, this is how I approach it. I know that I want to be finished with the teardrop classic act shape. I love it, it's great, it makes sense. Totally go with it, that's what we need. But I also know that to make that drift, it's, it's an expensive drift just because it's a lot of work to make. And I know that the drifts are consumables because the, fuller, the, the hammering of the cheeks, compressing it under the hammer, it, it wears out the drift. And so what I do is I do my first series of drifting with just basically a rectangular drift rounded edges. This drift is super quick to make under the power hammers. There's no special grinding or anything. And so I'll do like the majority of the hard forging on those ones. And then right at the end, I'll switch over to my teardrop where I know I'm not gonna be wearing them out as much. I have about, uh, for each size of ax, I have a series of about three dif different drifts. Um, so the first one is this rectangular one and I'll have like two or three of those and then I'll go to a smaller teardrop shape, and then I'll go with my final teardrop shape drift. That's the final cleanup. So right now we're going with the rectangular one. So you, you push it through. Once you've got it established in there, take your fullerene dies and start forging out those cheeks to make those lugs. Or in this case, we don't want any lugs, but we want to width widen the ax. And it's super important that you do a couple hits and then you flip the whole piece over because the bottom of the ax is sitting on the bottom die and if you would only forge from the top, like the one way without rotating it, it gets cooled and the material won't move as fast as the top and the top will move longer. And then when you flip it up and you start forging, you're gonna get a parallelogram. It's just nasty, not goodness. So just rotate it over until you've, and then, so what you do is once you've got the, the one heat out the drift, knock that drift out, get another heat, and then come in and clean up with the flat dies. Just flatten it out on the top, tuck it all back in and then back in and draw it out. Once you've got that shape pretty much established to your finished uh, dimensions for height, four inches, one inch wide-ish on the back, this is now when I'll come in with my first teardrop shape, chuck it in, go back to the fullerene dies, flatten it out, back to the flat dies, square it up. Then once you've got, basically what you should have at this point is a big block of steel, finished dimensions in height of the ax, finished dimensions in width of the ax, with a beautiful teardrop hole in it, and a lot of material in the front. Once you've got that, you're home free. You just simply chuck your fuller, keep your, I keep the uh, drift in the material at all times at this point now, uh, like when I'm forging it, not in the forge. 
and you just come under the power hammer and you just start working out that bit. Just draw it out, forge it out until you got the flares, depending on what you want. If you want flat top, a little bit curved. Uh, so this one, I want a little bit of curve on the top, a lot of curve on the bottom and just fullering it and smoothing it out. Once you've got the ax pretty much forged, it's gonna be raggedy end on the, on the end. There's gonna be extra material. You can trim that off at the end or you can trim that off and you're like 90% done your forging, you can trim it off. I almost like doing that so then you can come back and do final cleanup at the anvil and whatnot and know what you're looking at. Regardless though, once you've got that blade forged out, everything's looking good, this is where you'll come in with your final drift to get that nice clean, no cracks, no cold shuts or anything like that, and drive that in and that'll produce your finished results. Once you've got that, if it's all straight and clean, let that baby cool off and run it through its uh, heat treating cycles and processes to get that blade all hardened up. Sharpen that baby up, razor sharp, put the handle on, and you're ready to go cut down a tree. That is the way to make an ax, folks. Yes siree. Well, that's one way to make an ax. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We're gonna see you in the next one.